And the Toyota starting lineup for the Clemson Tigers, Ruby Whitethorn. Most impressive recruit in the history of Clemson women's basketball. And the freshman has been impactful this season as well. Whitethorn from Detroit, Michigan. 29 points in a game earlier this season. <laughs> Nell Fortner with some words of encouragement for the announcers. Their bench is just <laughs> to the right of our broadcast position inside Little John Coliseum. We don't always get to sit right next to the benches. <laughs> it's exciting. I can hear everything. We are right in the game. And so Georgia Tech in the white and pink and Clemson in the predominant pink uniforms. Georgia Tech 12 and 11 on the season, three and nine in conference play, looking for their first ACC road win. Blackshear had nowhere to go. Shot clock is running down. Late in the shot clock for Swartz. That three bounces off and Robinson pulls in the board, taken away, and a foul on the play. So Blackshear got it back for Georgia Tech and a foul against the Tigers. All right, Tabitha, time for tonight's Ford keys to the game, Jackets and Tigers. Georgia Tech handled the pressure. Clemson sits number two in the ACC in steals and also number two, forcing almost 19 turnovers a game. And for Clemson, it's box out and rebound. Coach told us earlier, Coach Butler, that is, that they can't allow Georgia Tech to have any second chance opportunities. And she named Blackshear as one player who likes to clean up around the rim. So she mentioned how she can't allow those second chance opportunities for Georgia Tech around the rim. Robinson picked up the personal foul for Clemson. That's a couple of free throws for Blackshear, 81% on the season. Georgia Tech is a team second in the conference in free throw shooting, 77% for the Yellow Jackets this year. That's an area where when they can stop the clock and score, those free throws really come in handy. Made 18 free throws last time they played Clemson as Amari Robinson goes right into the rack, takes a right at the defense and completes that one. Robinson, who averages just over 13 points per game, is the leading scorer for the Tigers. Double figures in 11 of 12 ACC games this season for Robinson. It's so impressive. 11 of 12 games. That's almost every ACC game. And we all know how tough the ACC is every year, but especially this year. Shot clock winding down on Georgia Tech again. And that's a traveling violation. It was Blackshear who got the pass from Morgan and took an extra step. This Georgia Tech team still trying to settle into each other, doing a lot better, especially offensively lately. And we mentioned in the open how Tony Morgan has been a big part of that. But both of those offensive possessions back to back were at the end of the shot clock. They've got to be able to get into their offensive rhythm a bit quicker, more efficient. Tigers are 13 and 12, 4 and 9 in conference play, and 8 and 5 on their home floor here at Little John Coliseum this season. Deep into the shot clock, side rim. Robinson had it for a moment, and the save right to Swartz. Two on one. Done back to Swartz. The defense got back. And Hank knocked it out of bounds for the Tigers. And that's a good job by Hannah Hank and Clemson for getting back in transition. Right here, it was a two-on-one. Too many passes, and it allowed Hank to recover and block that one. Sometimes being unselfish doesn't always work out well for you. So the foul is against Hank. That'll put Kara Dunn at the free throw line. Hannah Hank, the 6'2 senior center, picks up her first. And Hank is really active for this Clemson squad as well. She's eighth in defensive rebounds per game in the ACC, 17th in total rebounding. So she's another active player that can also stretch the floor for Clemson. These two teams played January 26th in Atlanta, Georgia. McCamish Pavilion, 85-74. The win for Georgia Tech against the visiting Tigers. And Cam Swartz a little bit dinged up on that place. Looks like she needs to just walk it off a bit. But a good job trailing on the screen right there, drawing that foul. Now Fortner, fourth year as the Georgia Tech head coach, as Hank picked up her second. 70 and 42. 
Coach Fortner overall, 231 career collegiate wins. And she's won at every single level, and she gets a three-pointer from her team. Kara Dunn knocked down that one. Pretty stroke from beyond the arc. Lauren Adenau has got a piece of that to force the turnover. She got it back for the jumper, and she hits it. And that's the ball movement that Georgia Tech likes to get. That's why they've been so successful the last few games. Early on in this game, they had to settle in just a little bit, but the last two possessions, we saw the ball moving a lot more. And we saw them score. And another foul against the Tigers underneath. I love Juan Adonaz's intensity, but right here, Blackshear, unselfish, draws in two defenders, gets it to Juan Adonaz, who's got her hands up and was ready to shoot. Nothing but net. Amanda Butler in her fifth year as the head coach of the Tigers. 2019 ACC Coach of the Year. 17th year as a collegiate head coach and closing in on 300 career wins for Amanda Butler. Around the perimeter, Morgan. That rattled out. Lone Adenaz tries to wrestle it away. Held ball and the arrow right now favors Georgia Tech. Correction, favors Clemson. It'll be Clemson basketball. But you'll take that if you're Georgia Tech because that was a good shot by Morgan. And then you had Lone Adenaz who got in there and corralled the rebound. Now it ended up being a jump ball, but so far you like the effort that you're seeing from Georgia Tech. And oh, Inyang, number 21 in pink into the game. She's got the basketball. Series of moves, it spins off the rim. Got it back and lays it in. And Inyang was the difference. Last game, she did not play. She was injured, so they didn't see her in the last matchup, which created some mismatches for Clemson. Morgan on the drive. Whitehorn recovered defensively to get a piece of it. Won't out and on straight away. Ooh. Morgan had it. Some contact out of bounds. We'll stay at this end of the floor. And I think Morgan's just a little bit upset. She went after two of those rebounds, got them, but just got dinged over the back. Ball stays with Georgia Tech, but physical plays down there. And you can see the replay. She goes up for the rebound, and the ball gets knocked out. Swartz catch and release. Long rebound. Kept alive. Swartz who leads the team and made three pointers 38 on the season and 167 for her career fumbled out of bounds That'll stay with the Yellow Jackets 511 from Marietta, Georgia three years in the Boston College program Dropped 39 points here last season in a Boston College uniform was carried off the court for her aerobic efforts that game. And then last game in Atlanta, dropped 24 against Clemson. Team high and season high. Driving basket. Shot clock was winding down for Blackshear. I like what I'm seeing from Blackshear. I mean, versus Clemson, she almost had a double-double. Career high, 19 points, 8 rebounds. Scoring in double figures, 6 of her last 8 games. So she's another player that's just been coming along for Georgia Tech, adding some scoring. To the rim, and two for the Tigers. Perpignan got in there at five foot eight, the graduate just sliced her way to the basket. That's a traveling violation against Georgia Tech. Their third turnover of the first quarter. Perpignan averages almost 10 points per game. Zero in pink. Graduate student from Elon. Another big time assister. As she got bumped right there by Morgan for the foul. And Morgan saying, she got me on the chin. Foul goes against Morgan. Right now it's a five point Georgia Tech lead. At Hardy's, no matter what you choose, it's there's on the court and as women. Coach Butts and the Jackets have an early lead here in this first quarter. Nine points off of those six Clemson turnovers. 
so far for the Yellow Jackets. And Clemson is second in the ACC and still so Georgia Tech kind of giving them a taste of their own medicine and capitalizing off of it. Yeah, the Tigers average almost 10 steals per game. They've got the basketball. Shot clock is down to five. Easy rebound for Swartz. Gaines has come into the game for Clemson, number 15. Also Douglas, number 24. Michaela Elmore is in there, number three as well. That's knocked away and taken back by Clemson. And again, you see the effect of Inno Inyang, who, like we mentioned already, did not play the last time they saw Georgia Tech which created some fouls for Clemson's posts and some mismatches. Douglas was looking for a foul on the drive, did not get it. Won Adenaz had the offensive glass. It goes out of bounds. Officials are going to talk about it for a second. They'll award the basketball to Clemson. Joseph Vazili, Tom Danaher, and Erica Harriman are officials this evening. And Won Adenaz seems surprised by this, pulls it down. And right there, it's knocked out of bounds of why it appears to be the freshman, Aaliyah Douglas. Tigers lost on Sunday at Wake Forest. It was in overtime, second straight OT loss. They lost 69-64 in Winston-Salem against the Demon Deacons. Struggle from beyond the arc, just four of 17 for Clemson. They'll take that shot clock down of six. Douglas Ooh. hits a three. And I correct myself, the junior Aaliyah Douglas, but that three ball is good no matter if she's a freshman or a junior. That was pretty. 17 made threes on the season for Douglas. We talked about the struggles against Wake Forest from three-point distance. Georgia Tech responds with Swartz and a three. And that got the bench a little riled up over. That's the offense that they need to get back on track. I like what I'm seeing from Dunn, Blackshear, Swartz. Really getting the offense going for Tech. Georgia Tech lost Sunday at Miami as that goes out of bounds and to the Yellow Jackets. And right here, Robinson gets the rebound, gets it out, gives them a second chance opportunity, and Douglas, nothing but net. And at the other end, Swartz responds with a three of her own. New Bradford too late, closing out. And you know Swartz can hit that. First three of the game for Swartz, 39th made on the season. That's the best on the team. Miscommunication as Morgan tried an entry pass and the area was vacant, out of bounds, and back to Clemson. But I like what I'm seeing with that. Like, you, you can be frustrated with that pass, right? But I like the fact that when these two players play more and Blackshear knows to stay and she knows that Morgan might get her that pass right back, that's going to be a nice one-two tandem when they get that chemistry going. Bianca Jackson has checked in for Georgia Tech, number 10 in white and pink. Whitehorn put on the brakes and puts a little touch on the jumper. Jordan Brand, All-American Gatorade Player of the Year, Michigan 2022 McDonald's All-American. The highest recruit in Clemson history, and she looked like it. We need a few extra minutes in the show to list all our accolades <laughs> prior to coming to Tigertown. Blackshear, turnaround, Miss Robinson. As we mentioned, Whitehorn had 29 points in a game against Northern Arizona at the Paradise Jam earlier this season. Foul going against Georgia Tech. And that's what you do when you can't get your offense going. Right here, Whitehorn corns off the screen, does a nice little pump fake, and gets that one to go. And on the next play that we just saw, she just drove it into the basket and drew the foul. That's how you get your offense going. You get the momentum back in your favor. So a quick breather for Morgan. She's back into the lineup, the freshman for Georgia Tech. And she had the position for the rebound. Jackson, the transfer from Florida State, was in that program for two years. She's got the ball on the perimeter, and now Blackshear. Trying to get around that tenacious double team and a soft bounce into Hermosa. That was good defense, better offense. Michaela Elmore recovered on the weak side as 
Ruby Whitehorn takes it in transition, doesn't even wait for the defense to recover, which is what you're supposed to do. Second basket for Whitehorn. Morgan. She ran into Elmore and turned it over. Clemson's defense is forcing some turnovers from this Tech squad. Georgia Tech's got seven turnovers, and then Clemson now has seven points off those turnovers. They only had two points off turnovers a couple minutes ago. So Clemson doing a much better job defensively of limiting what Tech can do. Reflected on the scoreboard as well as we're inside of a minute to go in our first quarter. It's a three-point game. Robinson got bumped by Blackshear. We have seen some physical play so yeah. far in this first quarter, Tabitha. It's been very quiet, too, which I kind of like. But between Blackshear and Robinson, they both have come up with busted lips each time down the floor from each other, just trying to get positioning on each other. Amanda Butler yells out the commands from the Clemson bench. <laughs> the whole gym was quiet on that one. As I said, we're on the side of the benches, so we can hear the interaction and soundtrack between the teams, players, and coaches. Right in the middle of the fray. Shot clock's inside of 10. Inside and two in Yang. That was a nice pass by Bradford. She drew in the double team and somehow got that pass in there, splitting hairs to Inyang. Four points for Inyang. She averages about six per game. Hermosa around the defender. That was nice for Hermosa. I mean, Hermosa sometimes has been, you know, tasked with not being tough enough in the post. And right there, she looked strong. She looked tough, took her time, and just shot over the defense. Hermosa had 12 points, seven rebounds in the win a couple of weeks ago for Georgia Tech at home against Clemson. Opinion misses. Hermosa, Jackson couldn't get it away. That's one quarter complete, 18-15, the visitors. A little physical out there between two of these teams. Georgia Tech winning the rebounding battle 11-4. to It was epic. It was a win for the Yellow Jackets last year, but... Delisha Washington dropped 40 points in the overtime loss. They, they took it down to 38. Did you know that? We had that game, Tom, and I, they took two points away. I'm going 40. I mean, <laughs> I witnessed 40 points. We Exactly. So, we witnessed some history that day. That was a great game. If you look at all the highlights, it's a 40-point game, officially 38, but... History will tell the story many years from now. And you know who will have 50 points in a few years. <laughs> Back to the game. Yes. So they've played some very, very spirited and close games, but Georgia Tech has dominated the series. Blackshear late in the clock. Schwartz just got it away. Too strong. Hermosa took a swing at it. Her pinion. On the drive against Swartz, who goes flying, and that's kicked by Hermosa. Perpignan really just put her head down and drove it right at Swartz. I don't even think Swartz tried to take the charge, but she did try to take the charge. She was moving, so a good no call either way by the refs, but nice strength there by Perpignan as Whitehorn tries to hang in the air and put that one up, doesn't get it to go. Hermosa ended up with the basketball early stages, second quarter. Georgia Tech with the lead on the road. Swartz is open and hits, and Morgan found her somehow. Cam Swartz is almost money coming off that screen. When they find her and she curls off that screen into her shot, it goes right into her rhythm and allows her to step into her rhythm. Pretty shot. Swartz now with five, has the ball, takes it back for Georgia Tech. Schwartz stepping into that Woo. three, and she's ripping the ropes for the Jackets. It's something about playing Clemson that gets Cam Swartz fired up. She's already got eight in this game. Two of those are three-pointers. And it doesn't matter what uniform she's wearing, by the way. <laughs> Scored the 39 points against Clemson in a BC uniform. So doing it at both ends right there. She forced a turnover, but a three-point over, not one, but two defenders 
and that was a deep three, Tom. And then the play before that, she got the steal. Then the play after she made that three, she just forced a turnover. So Cam Swartz, a two-way player, both ends of the floor. She's up to eight points with a couple of made three-pointers for Swartz. Jackson missed. Douglas on the run. Whitehorn stepping back for three. She started to chase the shot immediately. Maybe it was slightly offline. That's really the only part of her game. Not super strong for the freshman. She's just 6 of 36 from beyond the arc this season. Oh, she's got time. She's got <laughs> plenty of time to get that better. Swartz bumped on the drive. Hit the deck. And Cam Swartz is just being really aggressive, and that's exactly what Georgia Tech needs. So you, you see Amari Robinson going to the bench, Tabitha. That's her second personal foul. And Georgia Tech's doing a good job of keeping Robinson from being effective in this game. She hasn't been able to score, really. Only two points so far and just pick up her second. Swartz again on the jumper. And Robinson had only attempted two shots before exiting the game. Douglas needing assistance. Her pinion. Whitehorn, fancy dribble. Nowhere to go. How about the Georgia Tech D? They're really just kind of crowding in beneath the three-point line because Clemson's not a very good three-point shooting team as Hannah Hay. Although. <laughs> <laughs> Shoots a deep two. She must have heard me talking. So Hank from the corner. Three-point shot is not exactly the strength for Georgia Tech either. They're 13th in the conference, 28% as a team. Hermosa, too strong. However, Georgia Tech is number one in three-point percentage defense. They are. So they may not shoot it well, but they can defend it well. Watch that shot clock. So Jackson missed. Perpignan on the handle. Clemson trying to utilize a lot of these screens, and right there, Cameron Harris. Harrison, excuse me. Yeah, Ruby Whitehorn was starting to walk towards that Clemson bench. See right there, she may have stepped on an opponent's foot and in some discomfort, so she has gone and is going to the Tiger bench. Probably just needs to tighten up some tape, get back in there. Yeah, they need her back in the lineup yeah. for sure. Harrison picked up a foul for Georgia Tech. Keep an eye on the shot clock down to five. For Pinion. Excellent defense. Excellent defense by Tony Morgan. She did a nice job defending that from beyond the arc as Georgia Tech commits the travel. It's the eighth turnover of the first half for Georgia Tech. You do so much work defensively just to turn it over on offense. That can be frustrating sometimes. Her opinion doesn't even hit rim on that one. And that's a quick shot for Clemson. Probably need to take their time and get set up in their offense as well because that was a transition three where nobody was back to defend and rebound the ball. Second chance, a good hustle by Harrison to stay with it. The sophomore looked good on that one. Got her own rebound and put it back up. She comes into the game averaging 0.6 points per game. Bonus offense, Carmen Harrison. And Georgia Tech is dominating the boards, Tabitha. 17-7 against the Tigers. Hank, three front rim. And that was something that Amanda Butler told us her squad needed to do in order to win this game. And you see why Georgia Tech's got the lead. So Jackson was trying to save her. Her pinion took that ball off the face, it looked like. Yeah. So she was stunned for a moment. Needs a second to get her bearings and get up. And you're right, Tom. This has been physical, like quietly physical. 
Like neither team is really complaining. <laughs> How about the hustle by Harrison off her own miss? Almost looked like it was on purpose, throwing it off the backboard. Georgia Tech in front. Are able to see her play at home. And that's so special as a college athlete. My mom lived in Miami, and whenever we played UM, she would come and see the games. And even though I barely played, it was still nice to see <laughs> me there, you know? So just special all around for Cam Swartz being able to go home to Atlanta, Georgia. Last year, the ACC's most improved player right now on the bench for the Tigers. Also first team ACC last season. Right. Clemson in their press now. Something that Nell Fortner told us that Georgia Tech had to be able to handle. Clemson's pressure. Second in the league in steals and in forced turnovers. Shot clock at 10. Morgan. Corner jumper for three and a miss. Bounced away. Kara Dunn on the attempt. Clemson just one of seven on field goals in this quarter. And now one of eight. Hank trying to preserve the possession, and she did it. Man, Hank had to really work for that rebound. Daisha Bradford in there as well for the Tigers. Number two in pink. That goes out of bounds and will stay with Clemson. See Blackshear and Swartz are going to come in. Jackson and Harrison to the Georgia Tech bench. And Hank's got three rebounds. She needs 16 or needed 16 coming into this one to hit 500. So Hannah Hank narrowing down that 16 rebound she needs to try to make history. Foul on the play. Won Adenaz was defending. A look of dismay. Inyang was making the move for the Tigers and will stride to the free throw line. But that's the difference that Inyang makes. And we mentioned it earlier. She didn't play the last time Georgia Tech saw Clemson. Inyang averages just under six points a game, but eight points in ACC play. And you can see how she can just move in the paint. She likes that high-low. The high-low works with her and Hannah Hank and also with Amari Robinson. And when you don't have Inyang in there, that changes things up. That changes up matchups as she misses the free throw. Comes up empty as a 77% free throw shooter this season for the Tigers. As a team, they're 12th in the conference, 70% up and down the roster from the free throw line. Swartz trying to get free. Douglas did well to close. That one heads toward the backcourt and saved. Done. Blackshear baseline. Morgan in the right place and got fouled. And Tom, there were a couple things that helped Georgia Tech extend that possession. It was the ball movement around the arc that helped break down the defense. And then, yes, Tony Morgan was in the right place at the right time, but she moved to the right place at the right time. She followed the shot and went for the rebound, and that's why she was able to bring that one down. Robinson back in with her two personal fouls. Two points for Robinson so far as the leading scorer this season for the Tigers. And the last time Georgia Tech saw Clemson, Amari Robinson picked up two quick fouls in the first half again, so the same issue plaguing them in this game, and they need Robinson because she lead, leads the team in points and in rebounds. Just a three-point game at the end of the first quarter, 18-15 Georgia Tech. So right now only three points in the quarter for Ooh. the Tigers. You can make it five. Her opinion, that was nice. You said it, Tabitha. Three per opinion who averages close to nine and a half points per game, has four right now after that drive. But she knew what to do with her body, right? So nothing was going for her on that left side. What did she do? She crossed through the lane and got to the right side, away from the defense, so they couldn't block her shot. Robinson got that rebound. For Pinion, who led him against Wake Forest in a losing effort with 19 points on Sunday. She was 7 of 12 from the floor in that game. She's got the ball now.
Nice. Bradford. Dunn didn't want a foul. She also did move her feet well on that one, and Bradford just exploited it. She attacked the top foot, put her head down, and got right past the defense. Daisha Bradford, senior from Mobile, Alabama. Swartz works that shot clock inside of 10. Morgan trying to drive. Inyang held her ground, does it again, and stops Morgan Cold. And Georgia Tech's bench wanted a foul on that one. Still impressive nonetheless to see Morgan get her own rebound amongst all those pink jerseys. Minute and change remaining in the second quarter. The lead has been closed to five, knocked around and taken back by Blackshear and Georgia Tech. Blackshear is really battling out there against Amari Robinson. Robinson is a very active post. Blackshear holding her own. Georgia Tech has missed its last five shot attempts. Morgan's pass drifts into the hands of Ott. For Pinion, Robinson around the defender. Boy, Amar Robinson with the footwork right there. A little frustrated she couldn't get that one to go, but that was a pretty move. Over four and a half minutes without scoring for Georgia Tech. Clemson slowly creeping back in this one. They've narrowed it down just a little bit. Now they force the turnover on Morgan. 11 turnovers for Georgia Tech in the first half. And so Morgan goes to the Georgia Tech bench. Jackson is in. Also, Kara Dunn comes out for Georgia Tech. Now, mind you, Tom, part of the way through the second quarter, midway, this Clemson squad had 18 points. Georgia Tech had 27. Georgia Tech still sits at 27. Clemson's now at 22. So they've been able to stop Georgia Tech from scoring and try to inch back in and cut down on this lead. Close to five minutes without scoring in the close of this quarter for Georgia Tech. Final seconds for the Tigers. Perpignan driving and scoring. Couple of big buckets near the end of the quarter. And it'll be a three-point Georgia Tech lead as we head to the locker room. Again, Perpignan creating space and separation and leaning into that shot. A 6-0 run for Clemson over the last two minutes and 53 seconds. They've cut into this lead. And Perpignan had a couple of big buckets. Uh, Florida State, Virginia Tech game. Both those teams rake both with that maroon color. Don't so, get confused, folks. So that's Ruby Whitehorn, and she's testing that ankle. Remember, she tweaked it in the first half, went through the layup line very gingerly, but she's in there in that lineup for the Tigers, who lost in overtime on Sunday at Wake Forest and also lost in overtime here against Miami, as Tabitha mentioned. Those are their last two losses, and a foul is called. And usually when you get a tweaked ankle, you want to try to play through that, right? Like you want to tape it up, wrap it up a little bit tighter. But what you don't want to do is sit on it and let it swell up, and then you're immobile. So Whitehorn trying to get some more movement in there, puts up that shot, doesn't get it to go. Morgan brings it up for Georgia Tech. Looking for their first win on the road in conference play. Pretty good when they've got that halftime lead. 11 and two this season. Whitehorn. Dunn had nowhere to go when she penetrated baseline. Whitehorn rejoins the play with the entry. Robinson stumbles on the baseline. Blackshear, the nearest Yellow Jacket. And Robinson did a nice job of exposing the baseline. Blackshear's got to get a foot on the line and cut it off. And when you don't do it, this is what happens. You draw the foul. Blackshear just picked up her second personal. Again, Georgia Tech did not score in that second quarter for the last five minutes and 24 seconds. They turned it over three times and they shot 0 for 5. Tigers had a 6-0 run to close the gap to three. Early moments of the third and Robinson. 
And that's how Mari Robinson can get going. Had a bit of a stagnant first half with that foul trouble. But good to see her knock down the first or second set of points for Clemson. Stop me if you've heard this before. Robinson leads him in scoring and rebounding. <laughs> Won't Adenaz in close misses. Hank rips it out of the air. Her pinion up ahead. Three-pointer is good from Bradford. For Clemson, they now have taken the lead. And that's because they got yet another stop down here defensively and then turned it into offense. First three of the game for Deja Bradford. 34 threes on the season, and she leads the Tigers in that category. Won't Adenaz misses close in again. Blackshear grabs it. Yeah, Adenaz just turned around and elevated. Had a bit too much on it, but a nice pass by Tony Morgan. Swartz wants that three. Whitehorn trying to save it on the baseline, and she did. She guarded her fall on that one, too. Didn't want to land too hard. And she still tries to get some movement in that tweaked ankle. Really fighting through that pain. Great play on the baseline for the Tigers. You can't, give a, you can't give a post player that straight pass like that. And Whitehorn is a freshman. She'll get there. But you've got Amari Robinson who leads this team in scoring. You can't just shoot that pass at her chest like that. And she's got two defenders on her back. So Swartz went out of bounds, lost the ball, and then tried to turn it up court and ran into Hannah Hank and knocked Hank to the court. Swartz takes it baseline, loses it. Oh, and then inadvertently runs into Hannah Hank. Nothing egregious there. Complete accident. Certainly not, as Swartz was just heading back up the court. And there is a timeout on the court. And so the Tigers have come out of the locker room, Tabitha, and taken the lead. 29-27, so a two-point lead. We'll take a breather real quick, step aside, and come back for more ACC women's basketball as we play for K. A lot of pink in the building tonight. For the Blue Devils, check your local listings for the game and time in your area on ACC women's basketball doubleheader on Sunday. Ooh, Miami coming off a ranked win. Clemson ball out of bounds. So the officials did take a look at this just to make sure. Joe Vasily just made the announcement. It was inadvertent as Swartz was trying to head back up the court and ran into Hannah Hank. Hank was caught by surprise. And if that were me, I'd just chalk it up to me being clumsy. I run into <laughs> people and things all the time. <laughs> and so it's okay. Everybody's fine. Play resumes. Officials did take a look at it just to make sure. Some pressure here from Georgia Tech. Skillfully broken by the Tigers. Trying to give Clemson a taste of their own medicine. We haven't seen either team press a lot in this game, but we saw Clemson press a little bit in that first half. Across the half, the Tigers are on a 12-0 run. Robinson can add to that run. Foul on the way to the basket. And that's what Robinson can do. We talked in the open about her being a stretch four and how that helps the team and how it's so dangerous. Amari Robinson is tough on the interior. She can shoot the three. And as you just saw, she can also take your post players off the dribble and draw the foul. Norea Hermosa picked up the foul for Georgia Tech. Robinson at the free throw line, 84% on the season. Amari, I like your hair today, girl. <laughs> just, just FYI. Robinson made 37 straight free throws. What? At one point in this season, broke a 39-year-old record set by Janet Knight in 1983. And she's got two right there. 37 in a row? What was, what was your record, Tabitha? I don't know, but I was a very good free throw shooter. It's the only way I scored. <laughs> we'll look that up. Steel, Tigers. <laughs> wow, the Georgia Tech drought. It's amazing. You go all the way back to the 524 mark of the second quarter to find their last points. Steel. Morgan. Say it and it happens. Tony Morgan said, ah, 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 Tom. No. 
We're going to stop that drought right here, but that's exactly how Georgia Tech can get themselves back in this game through their defense. This has been a blue-collar defensive team since before I played, so that is the Ramblin' Wreck identity. Eight and a half minutes between points for Georgia Tech. And that stopped a 14-0 Clemson run, and here comes Robinson. That's the player you don't want to get hot. We mentioned it a few times. She leads them in points and in rebounds, and she can score at all three levels. If I'm Georgia Tech, I'm trying to figure out a way to go at Robinson and continue getting her, keeping her in foul trouble. All you got to do is remember the game two weeks ago. Robinson, game high, 26 points in a losing effort at Georgia Tech where she made three three-pointers as well. And the Tigers are getting the ball back. All right, time for tonight's CPI security, protecting the paint. Right here, Tony Morgan heard you, Tom. She said, we had no score in eight minutes. Well, here I go. She leaks out, gets the steal, intercepts the passing lane, and takes it the full length of the court. Nobody can catch her. Stops the drought for Tech and puts them on the board. Morgan also has five assists in our game tonight as well. Swartz picks up the loose ball. Runs into Perpignan. Offensive foul against Swartz. Yeah, I saw it right here in front of the booth. And the ref was right there as well. Swartz kind of pushed off. And you can see it right here. She crosses over. And that left arm gets Perpignan in the chest. Offensive foul. Up ahead, Robinson. Footwork. Makes the move on Hermosa and scores. This is footwork for me. It is the footwork for me. Robinson's mother, Andrea, was a two-time All-American at Providence, so Mama Andrea taught her something, and her dad also played for Digger Phelps and Notre Dame. He averaged under 15 points a game, so parents have been teaching her a lot. They should be all smiles right now. She's gotten to double digits with 10 points. Her opinion is going to pick up the foul for the Tigers. First on Bree. And Tom Clemson has become the aggressor. They have taken over this game, taken the lead. They're four of their last four field goals. Made four of four. And now you see them setting up defensively to put some pressure on Tech. Robinson alone has eight points in the quarter and has made all three of her shot attempts. Inside of five minutes to go in the third. Blackshear baseline. Struggles continue. Again, not a bad shot, but a quick shot. You want to get that ball rotating around to the other side of the court so that you can break down the defense. Georgia Tech shooting just 33% of the game right now. Games on the catch and shoot. Nice job by Gaines, flashing to the free throw line. They find her for the flash, she knocks it down, and Nell Fortner wants a timeout. The Tigers take the lead, 37-29, Clemson. Over the years. Take that ball around the arc and then drive it in, try to draw some fouls, especially on Robinson, who they got in foul trouble in the first half, but now they've kind of gone away from it. Yellow Jackets did struggle in the early part of the ACC schedule, started 0 of 7 out of the ACC gate. They've won three of their last five games. In trouble here, though, with 4.20 to go in the third. Juan Arenas to Hermosa, foul called. And Adonis goes to Hermosa. Hermosa says, that's me. And she points at her head and says, I've got to have that. But a nice high-low pass from Juan Adonis. And remember, Hermosa, for the last few seasons, have been the recipient of that high-low, that nice high-low pass from Kubai, who's no longer on this Georgia Tech squad. Kubai, one of the best post-passers the league has ever seen, especially in the ACC. No Lorella Kubai. No Lotamai Latinen for this Georgia Tech team, which, by the way, has gone to the NCAA tournament the last two years. Sweet 16, two seasons ago. Last season, knocked out in the first round. But yeah, consecutive NCAA tournaments for Tech. Dorea Hermosa, the senior from Vitoria, Spain. That is north central Spain, about 350 kilometers north of Madrid.
Geography lesson complete. Tigers with the basketball. <laughs> five of their last five from the floor. For Pinion put on the brakes and found Douglas. Shot clock to seven. Robinson in a congested area. Had two defenders surrounding her. And a foul on the play against Georgia Tech. And Georgia Tech's trying to slow down Amari Robinson. And notice Aviance Carter, who picks up the foul, is defending Robinson. And Aviance Carter, even though she is shorter than Robinson, is tough. She stands at five foot ten, but she plays like a post player. Carter, who played half a minute in the first half, committing the foul. Amari Robinson, the senior from Douglasville, Georgia, at the free throw line, playing in her 112th career collegiate game. Despite the miss, three-time ACC All-Academic Amari Robinson. And she can play basketball, too. See, it's doable, kids. You can be an excellent athlete <laughs> and be smart. Thanks for mentioning that, Tom. Absolutely. <laughs> I hope Andrea and Keith are pleased about that as well, her parents. Her opinion almost had a steal. Jackson got it back to Swartz. Bounces out Hermosa. Carter. Boy, that ball will just not bounce in for Georgia Tech. Several opportunities at the rim. Georgia Tech's got to key in and complete those. That was point blank range at the rim for Hermosa, the second one. And if you want the favor of the refs, you've got to be able to go in there, battle, fight, show them that you can make the shot through contact as well as when you're open. Carter at the free throw line for Georgia Tech. She's now 15 of 19 on the season from the stripe. Junior from Norcross, Georgia. And Carter has made some divots in games this season. And even last season, she's put in and things happen. So Georgia Tech putting Carter in. I'm interested to see how the rest of the game plays out as she almost comes up with another steal. How about Robinson? Whitehorn tried to go behind the back. Yeah. Somehow, the ball came to Robinson. Aviance Carter got her hand on that, almost forced the steal, but it went right into Robinson's hands. Cleaned it right on up. Nine is the largest lead of the game for the Tigers. 40-31 inside of three minutes to go in the third. Carter working the baseline. Yeah. Up and under. So like we just mentioned, Tom, when Carter goes into that game, she does stuff for Georgia Tech, and she creates momentum with her intensity. She's got three points now after that driving basket, and now Carter right on her season average, and the Yellow Jackets have the ball back. Sports underneath. Looks like Bradford hustled back to make sure Swartz couldn't put that one up on the backboard. And I think Swartz, a little frustrated, wanted the foul on that one. But on the opposite end, Whitehorn tried to pass it. Carter almost came up with it, but it went right to Amari Robinson, who cleaned it up and was grateful for the unintended assist. I mean, when something <laughs> like that happens, you got to think, maybe this is our night. And as we told you, Georgia Tech has dominated this series recently. It is the 93rd all-time meeting. But Georgia Tech's won nine in a row in the series and 13 of the last 14 and three in a row here in Clemson, South Carolina. So Clemson's hungry for one and they've lost their last four straight and those last four have been by 11 points or less and the last two have been in overtime. You can't get any closer. You can't get any closer. <laughs> so this is a Clemson squad who says, listen, we lost the first one to Georgia Tech in Atlanta. Now we're on our home floor. We want this one back. That was January 26, a couple of weeks ago, 85-74, the decision for Georgia Tech and head coach Nell Fortner. Two minutes to go in the quarter, seven-point game. Steel Swartz trying to beat the field to the rim. Douglas was hustling back, committed the foul, score the basket for Swartz. And that's the momentum that Georgia Tech needed. The entire bench 
was off their feet on that and one. And that's what they needed to get them back in this one. It was going in Clemson's way. They were the aggressor. Then Cam Swartz got right into the passing lanes, took the full length of the court and drew the and one. Landed hard on her backside, but completed the play for Tech. First free throw of the game for Swartz. 12 points, three boards. It'll still be 12 points. And she's a great free throw shooter as well. 82% of the season. And she gets there a lot. 82 of 100 prior Ooh. to that free throw for Swartz. So 82 of 100 is what if I do that math? Uh, that's, <laughs> that, I, even I can figure that one out. Of course, it just changed because she missed the free throw. Oh, yeah. Now so what is it? you got to calculate that as do well. some Jordan Tech math. Hank down the lane. The kick. Three-pointer from the corner. What a bounce for Elmore. Michaela Elmore sits 31% from three on the season. So you know she can hit that shot. And that's the thing about Clemson. They've got bigs, as Swartz puts up a three and misses it, but they've got bigs in Hannah Hank and Michaela Elmore and Amari Robinson, who can not just put up the three, but they can also make that three. Elmore's now made 11 threes this season. Tigers in the quarter, seven of 10 from the floor. Bradford against three defenders. Over top gains, Hermosa has it. Bradford might have gotten away with the travel. Schwartz is open for three. Gains over the top of Hermosa for the board. Long shots, long rebounds. Georgia Tech had no rebounding position on that quick three-point shot. Just three of 12 shooting in the quarter for Georgia Tech. It's about a two-second difference, game and shot. Bradford. Yeah. Offensive foul, Swartz had the position. Absolutely, Cameron Swartz did an excellent, excellent job. Leaping out with that left foot and getting in front, squaring up so you can see her number. So Nunu Bradford had no choice but to charge into her chest. 5.6 seconds to go the length of the court for Georgia Tech. Done. Done. Hermosa nice. lays it in right in front of the horn. That play was ran to perfection. They didn't panic. I didn't know who was going to get that shot. But that's why you run those last second plays in practice for moments like that. Georgia Tech ran that one to perfection. Seven points for Hermosa. Leading the way for Georgia Tech. With 12. Well, she led the way last time for Georgia Tech with 24 points, but she's just gotten the back end of the game. Close this gap for Tech on the scoring drive was looking or looming in that third quarter for taking it for Marley Robinson. She's out of foul trouble per se. And because of that, she's gotten some chemistry going. Got Clemson back in in that third quarter where they took the lead over Georgia Tech and she just scored several ways at all three levels and did it on both ends of the court, defensively and offensively. 11 points in that third quarter alone for Robinson. And Gaines hits the jumper to get us rolling in the fourth. So Swartz leads the way with 12. She has five steals in the game also. And Robinson has 13. Five of seven from the floor. Hermosa over the shoulder. Hank the board. And Hermosa had a smaller player. She's got to take her time and square up on that one. Because, yes, Gaines can jump out the gym. But your point blank out the rim at six foot five. You've got to have that. Shot clock at 10. Robinson. Here comes Jackson, Georgia Tech. Threading the bounce pass to Swartz. Caught it and scored. So Cam Swartz was the recipient of that layup, but credit her on the defensive end down here because I think people might have missed it, but Cam Swartz got her hand on the ball as Amari Robinson was about to go up and score, which is why her shot was short at the rim. Yeah, the five steals tonight for Swartz. A career high, and now she is the leading scorer in our game. 14 points to lead everybody. Robinson right behind her with 13. 
Bradford. Jackson lunges for the rebound. Hermosa, great pass and two, and the cutter Kara Dunn. Hermosa's got that vision and she can definitely pass the ball. Well, Georgia Tech climbing back in this one. Both teams having to play a bit of catch up. Carter was looking for a tie up, instead got a foul. Here we go. Here we go. Second personal on Carter. But notice, Tom, both teams, what are they doing? They're going into the paint a lot more and driving into the basket. It's almost like they heard me when I said they need to get into the paint, have those high percentage shots. I mean, based on our proximity to the benches, maybe they did. <laughs> they fight them. The Georgia Tech bench, no lines, about six feet away from us. And then Clemson down the table to our left. Gains at the line. Kiana Gaines, sophomore, Columbus, Georgia. 45% free throw shooter this season. Wouldn't know it from those two, though. <laughs> Looking good on those. First free throws of the game for Gaines. And she's greeted by her teammates. Despite the struggles for the Jackets, a two-possession game in the fourth. Carter working that baseline again. It's going to be a difficult shot all the way. And again, Carter may not be the most prolific scorer on this team, but you got to give her some credit. When she got put in this game, that's when the momentum got back in Georgia Tech's favor. Cam Swartz has been trying to keep the scoring going all game, but there's only so much you can do over the course of 40 minutes. But while Swartz wasn't on for a period in that second quarter, in that third quarter, excuse me, Aviance Carter came in and gave Georgia Tech some momentum. And she gave them some defense at the other end as well. Jackson driving and missing. The Pinion sends it back to Robinson, tees up the three ball. Jackson runs it up. Carter, Swartz, tough catch. Trying to find some daylight. Goes into the corner for Dunn. Nice rebound by Hermosa. Ball goes out of bounds to the Tigers. Nice rebound, not as good of an outlet. Frustrating for the Yellow Jackets. But again, defensively, you get to stop here and you try to get it back on offense. But credit Clemson, who's taken the lead in this one and has not relinquished it. Trail by three at halftime, 27-24 to Georgia Tech. No field goals in the last two minutes and 50 seconds for Clemson. So both teams going on droughts in this one and both teams going on runs. The Pinion nowhere to go on the defending by Jackson. Shot clock down to two. Off the glass and in. That shot clock was winding down for Inyang. She's got six. Georgia Tech played straight up man-to-man -man defense, and N.O. Inyang just did a nice little jab step to Hermosa straight to the rack. Inyang, the sophomore, the big bucket. Deep into the shot clock. About to cross the six minute threshold of the fourth. Eight point lead, Tigers. Carter stops, misses. Hank another rebound. A little bit too much on that one. Carter trying to shoot over a taller defender. So Hannah Hank into double digits rebounding. She's got 10 now. Hank and Robinson both are ranked in the ACC in rebounds. Might have been a bump there by Swartz. And she is assessed for personal. Blackshear is going to come into the lineup for Georgia Tech. Dunn comes out. So Swartz has picked up her second. There's Dunn coming out for Georgia Tech. She's got seven points. Does have a three-pointer to her credit. 
Checking on the three-pointers, the Tigers are four of 11 in the game, and Georgia Tech is three for 13. These teams don't necessarily rely on the three-point shot, but it's always nice to add a few to the mix. They both have three-point shooters, though, in sports, and even Amari Robinson for Clemson. For Pinion, changing direction. She threw the entire Georgia Tech defense off balance and goes to the rim. When you're a mouse in the house, you got to get creative in how you score. And Propinion has shown us a couple different ways where she's kind of created space between her and the defense and not allowed them to block her shot. She's got eight points. They tried the entry to Hermosa. Locked up with In Yang, who picks up the personal for the Tigers. And let's watch this move. She keeps her dribble alive, uses maybe a pseudo screen by In Yang, and just takes it baseline on two defenders. Weak side help doesn't get there for Georgia Tech, and she just does a nice reverse layup. That's why you keep your vision alive and up when you dribble so that you can assess the court. Opinion doing a good job of that on that one. Goes to the bench for the Tigers and her teammates, and Bradford produce a turnover. Bradford to the basket and scores. New, new Bradford. Drops her fifth point of the game, and that's going to force Georgia Tech and Nell Fortner to take a timeout. How about an 8-0 run for the Tigers over the last three minutes and 11 seconds? The Ramblin' Rack don't want this game to get out of control, but credit Clemson, who's taken the lead, kept the lead. They go up by 12 with 448 left in the fourth quarter. New New Bradford trying to get some things done and make sure they take this one home. The Clemson bitch likes it. Now, Georgia Tech also has 18 points off of turnovers and leads on the boards, as Tabitha mentioned. It was really that drought at the end of the second quarter. They threatened to pull away in this game. And they it's, went on, sorry, sorry no. excuse me, but they went on another run, Clemson that is. 8-0 run over the last three minutes and 11 seconds. That's exactly what I was gonna say. The <laughs> Tigers were the ones who threatened to run away with this. And remember, just a moment ago, a couple minutes ago, it was 47-41. Yeah. Two possession game and Georgia Tech had the basketball. It's now 53-41 and Tigers have their biggest lead of the game. Yeah, Georgia Tech had some momentum. They got Avion's Carter in there and that kind of helped bring along Swartz who brought along Hermosa and they had some momentum going. It was a three point game, but again, credit Clemson who after they got this lead, they have not given it up. Bradford around the edge. Her pinion playing in her 129th career college basketball game as a transfer from Elon. The dish to Robinson, score the basket. And an excellent pass by Perpignan to Amari Robinson. She drew in the two defenders, came off of the Hermosa hedge, and a nice job by Robinson with the pump fake on Blackshear. Gets her in the air and draws the end one. And that's Blackshear's third foul. Three of five from the line for Robinson. Could not complete the old school three-point play. Her team will maintain possession out of bounds. Yeah, Georgia Tech had their hands on the rebounds and kind of just let it get out of bounds. Gaines. Yellow Jackets eat the score in a hurry. Blackshear. Jackson. Gaines runs it down to the corner. And again, not a bad shot by Bianca Jackson. She can hit that three, but there was no white jerseys over here on the weak side rebound. It's just 32% from the floor for Georgia Tech. They came in at 38%, and that was at the bottom of the conference to begin with. Shot clock at four. Bradford, nifty dribble, hangs and scores. Nunu Bradford has come alive in these last 
few minutes. She's now at nine points, was more of a facilitator in that first half, but in this fourth quarter, knows she's got to be a scorer. Right on her average of 9.6 points per game with Daisha Bradford, senior in this lineup for the Tigers. Trying to stop the recent Georgia Tech dominance in this series. Robinson hits the deck between Morgan and Blackshear. Officials say it's Tiger basketball. And for Georgia Tech, they've got to be able to box out. Amari Robinson was able to out-jump Blackshear on that one. And in women's basketball, yes, there are some of us who are jumping out of the gym. I was not one of those. And there are other women who can't jump out of the gym. So what do you do? You box out, you get low, and you put a body on somebody, and then you go up for the rebound. Right now in the fourth, Tigers outscoring Georgia Tech 14-4. to and the run is now 12 nothing over the last five minutes and change. Trying to solidify this one and cement victory on their home floor for the Tigers. Late in the shot clock, In Yang spun into a double. Gaines got the shot away. Great defense. Very good defense by Georgia Tech. They gave up nothing and then they boxed out to get the rebound. Only to have an unforced turnover and give the ball back to Clemson. That right there could be the story of the night, just in a nutshell, for Coach Fortner. And again, it's frustrating because that's a play that Clemson didn't necessarily do. That's Georgia Tech doing that to themselves. And you gotta remember, this is almost a completely new squad. Only one returning starter in Hermosa. And then Mon Adonaz didn't play a lot of minutes. She's on the floor, but she didn't play a lot of minutes last season. Carter played healthy minutes, hasn't played as much minutes this season. So this is pretty much a brand new team. They're still working on that chemistry. Inside of two minutes to go in our fourth quarter, Georgia Tech has turned it over 21 times. It's a lot of turnovers. Too many turnovers. They've only scored 14 points in this second half combined in the third and fourth. Stepped out of bounds, Hannah Hank. Luckily, the Tigers can afford that at this juncture. Should have known that Amanda Butler's team would put forth a solid effort at home. Eight and five this season on their home floor. Two and four in conference play. It appears that they're going to get their third home win. And like you mentioned ACC. it, Tom, they wanted this game more. You can sense it. They lost their last four. Two of those last four were overtime games. This is a team that's right there. Georgia Tech beat them on Georgia Tech's home floor. Clemson wants that back on their own home floor. Tigers' last win of the series was January of 2019 here at Little John Coliseum, 71-61. Lost the next nine against the Yellow Jackets, but that string may be coming to an end tonight. Just over a minute to play. 57-41 Tigers, Bradford. Traveled. Bradford had the right idea, but Georgia Tech's defense even better forced the travel. Tigers. Nice way to stop the bleeding. Yeah, the Tigers hadn't won since January 22nd on the road at BC, 67-57. They'll snap that losing streak tonight. Fourth quarter ends up being the difference. Yeah. It was just a six point lead after the third for Clemson. Clemson wanted it more. Georgia Tech's been playing well the last few games, but Clemson wanted this game a lot more. Just four points scored by Georgia Tech in this fourth quarter. I think it's safe to say that the offense still working on some chemistry. But credit Clemson, I don't want to make this about what Georgia Tech didn't do. I want to make this about what Clemson has done. And this is a game that they trailed early on. And they stuck with it. They put their heads down and stuck with their game plan and wore Georgia Tech down. That will do it. Final count. Clemson 57, Georgia Tech 41. It almost looked like it was going to be a repeat because Amari Robinson was in foul trouble in that first half. But Clemson stuck with their game plan. Robinson played smart and ended up finishing with a team high 50.